Okay, so here we have our uh, general Lorentz transforms for the time in the primed frame, which again is a linear combination of the time coordinate and the space coordinate in the unprimed frame, and also the uh, spatial coordinate in the in the primed frame. Now again, I've now we've rewritten this in terms of delta t prime, delta x prime, delta t and delta x, because um, we basically assumed that at t equals t prime equal that the the observers in each of the reference frames reset their clocks when the coordinate axes pass each other. That's a particular event, a single event that they must both agree upon, and that's when they reset their clocks. So now any other event, any subsequent event, is referenced um, to that particular event, and so uh, the time coordinate and the spatial coordinate for the for any other event we can calculate just by ca uh, by um, looking at differences. Okay, so that's how we made that. Um, that, that thing. Now if we imagine that we have two events that take place at the same point in, in space in the unprimed frame in S, that means that delta x equals zero and that is the definition of the proper time. So the interval, the time interval between those two events uh, that take place at the same point in, in time, uh, same point in space, is the proper time. Okay, And so if we know that then the time measured for um, uh, in the prime frame, in a moving frame, is going to be, with respect to that, is going to be uh, time dilated, okay? So it's going to be time dilated by the factor gamma, um, okay? And if we compare that with, uh, with equation one up here, then what we conclude is that alpha one is equal to gamma, the the Lorentz factor. Okay. Now, the the event that we can be taught, the two events which are taking place at the same point in S, maybe they're just two ticks of a clock. Okay. And so, according to S prime, okay, that is the moving frame, um, the clock or S has moved a distance delta x equals minus v times uh, delta x prime is equal to minus v times delta t prime when, between the two clicks of the clock, two ticks of the clock. Okay, so again, uh, in, in S there's a clock ticking, okay, and so it's ticking out to, it's ticking out, each tick is an event which happens at a particular point in space in the S frame. According to S prime, the time interval between those uh, between the ticks is time dilated, and that allows us to solve for alpha one. And in addition, the clock seems to be moving with respect to s prime. Okay, and how far does it move? Well, how far does the clock move? Well, the clock moves a distance delta x prime is equal to minus the relative velocity. Remember, the clock looks like it's moving backwards with respect to s prime because s prime is moving in the plus x direction with respect to s, okay, so it moves, uh, it looks like the clock has moved that far, okay, so delta x prime is equal to minus v over c times c delta t prime, I've just rewritten this, which is equal to minus beta times gamma c delta t, all I've done is basically just plug in right here what c delta t prime is, okay, see that and uh, so it's the time dilated it's time dilated and this allows us to conclude that alpha 3 is equal to minus gamma beta okay so just by assuming um, um, basically that the events are uh, in this in one case are just ticks of a clock I can get alpha 1 and alpha 3 as as I've shown